Heads up before we get started, this episode has swearing and mentions of drug abuse and domestic violence. If you or someone you know needs help, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline, 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. Or find substance abuse and mental health support by calling 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-4357. On to the show. This is Brave Little State. I'm Josh Crane. And I'm Manny Gusky. <laughs> Let's give it up for the phenomenal, extracurricular, comical, glorious, never stop the drama, so keep it, kick it, rip it, dip it, dip it, lip it in the domino. It's a Friday evening in June inside a coffee shop in Burlington. Drop your feet. I'm here for the Black Artist Showcase, and poet Rajni Eddins is emceeing the heck out of this event. Stop the blast away. Killing him, anti villain him, popping straight out the ceiling him. This is his intro for the person I came here to see. Still steady, but villain him. Drilling him, drilling him, drilling him, drilling him, drilling him. Give it up for Sister Omega to the chain and we'll stop as you get to the stage. Oh my God, it really isn't that serious, but you should really intro me when I'm at a bigger venue. Yes. Hi, I'm Omega J. Omega J. Let's start this off. Omega is a Burlington based comedian and MC. MCs are basically rappers who work the crowd as well. Trigger warning I cuss. Omega Jade lives and breathes Vermont rap. She makes her own music, she teaches spoken word and hip hop at the Clemens Family Farm in Charlotte, and she writes about Vermont rap music on her blog, the appropriately titled Omega Jade's Cool Ass Blog. Omega's been rapping for the past five years. She's released an album and an EP under the Vermont-based hip-hop label Equalize Records. She's also self-released an album and a handful of singles, right, so like Real Recognizes Real, Real, which she performed stripped down at the Black Artist Showcase I attended. I'd rather hear a harsh truth than a nice lie. Not capable of truth, please walk on by. Too old for the bullshit, so what can I say? I'm that old school kid born in 78. Every lie you tell, you gotta keep Omega track. Jade is redefining what it means to be a successful artist. She's in her 40s, has four kids. She's lived in Vermont for decades, but grew up in San Diego. And she only started rapping in 2018. But in a short period of time, she's become a raw voice in a small, tight-knit music scene. She brings something new and important. I asked one of Omega's close collaborators to try and put her contribution into words. She's got a lot to talk about. Eric McEdward goes by Rico James. He's been a producer in Vermont for the past 13 years. And she has a small filter, and she's honest. And, you know, that that's what I want And when I make art and when I listen to art, when I see art. I don't want any phony kind of stuff. I, I, want, to, I want to feel that it's real. And she has that all the time. Right here. From Vermont Public, this is Brave Brave Little State. State. Here on the show, we answer questions about Vermont that have been asked and voted on by you, our audience. Today, a story that originates with the curiosity of Jeremy Benty of Evansville, Indiana. The last time I was up in New England, um, I was driving with my brother-in-law, and he had some Vermont rappers that he was listening to in the car. And I was like, I don't know anything about Vermont rappers at all. So he wrote to Brave Little State. Who are some current Vermont rappers? And what is it like to be a rapper in Vermont? To answer Jeremy's question, May Nagusky learns about rap in Vermont and dives deep into the life and music of one artist, Omega Jade. I definitely believe in bringing truth to power. Omega's lived in Vermont for multiple decades now, but her evolution into a Vermont MC and rapper happened more recently. It started as a creative outlet and coping strategy. I was doing what my psychiatrist at Browderboro Retreat told me to do, get on stage or you'll be back. I was just following the prescription. Brave Little State is a proud member of the NPR Network. Welcome. 
Support for Brave Little State comes from Sunset Lake CBD, a farmer-owned company crafting CBD products with Vermont-grown hemp. Their product listing and information on home delivery available at sunsetlakecbd.com. Support for Brave Little State comes from Small Dog Electronics, an Apple premier partner and authorized service location providing Apple computers and accessories for students, families, and businesses. Find them on Flynn Avenue in Burlington and at smalldog.com. I guess just to start, maybe you could tell me like who you are and, and, and what you do. <laughs> who am I? Ha! Um, you may call me Ishmael. Um, to quote the Melville. While I was attending the Black Artist Showcase, I caught up with spoken word artist Ishmael Ahmed. He grew up in Vermont, and he's witnessed firsthand the state's rap scene evolution since the 90s. The roots kind of run deep, because even back in the 90s, there was the Acid Jazz, there was Belizbaha, there was Fatty B, there was a Dog, and all that laid the groundwork for what we have now. But the Vermont hip-hop scene has changed over the years. Artists such as 99 Neighbors, Jarve, and North Ave Jax are starting to reach the mainstream, going on tour outside of Vermont and reaching hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. Obviously, there's a way more now, and there's a whole new class of, of young kids and a lot of different like variety right now, which is so cool. Once again, music producer Rico James. And that's just going to fuel the next kids 10 years younger that are like, okay. And I feel like it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's definitely bigger than it ever has been, I think. But it's still relatively small because Vermont is small. I think it's like a blessing and a curse how small it is. Um, I remember me and Jax were shooting one of... This is Kelly Butt Spirito. He goes by Love Kelly, and he's been making rap music videos in Vermont for the past four years, cool including is, one like, with Vermont rapper and, North Ave Jax. I remember Piff saying to... We were, like, complaining about Vermont. We were, like, so small, like, there's nothing going on. Like, you know, we're trying to blow up. Like, what is? what do we do? And he was, like, yo... Because he's, like... He, he's been on world tours. Like, he's a legend. So he was, like, yo... Honestly, there's a serious benefit to growing up in a place that's so small because you can take over and you can unite everyone on one thing. Vermont has a ton of small little venues. Rico James. You know, even if there's 10 people there and they're all hot, they're all sweating, but they're in a circle like at the same wavelength, you see a cypher come together, you see people opening their minds and like just sharing that is such such a powerful thing that I hope everyone can find a version of that somewhere in something. Rico said that there can be tension between Burlington rappers and rappers in other parts of the state. I feel like the southern Vermonters kind of hate on Burlington because we probably get the bigger shows and we're always trying to pull them to our shows and we're not necessarily making trips down south all the time. It's so many different like sectors, like groups of it. Vermont's DJ Ron Stoppable. It'd be nice if it was all together you know but you know some people just do their own thing some collaborate with others some don't it it needs to be more unified kelly the guy who makes rap videos says the growth of the rap scene in vermont is unprecedented and hugely important we have these like artists that are big artists hanging out at houses with artists that are like in high school here and them being like oh yeah i've actually met that artist I know he, just what he's like. I think it changes the perspective of things feeling so impossible. I think when you're from a place like this, a lot of things feel impossible because you don't see success in the creative industry every day on a massive scale because, like, it's Vermont, you know? And so I think, like, when you bring artists here who have had that and who are, like, you know, right next to superstars and stuff, you're like, I could do that. He's no different than me, you know? And I think that that's, like, a really important thing to realize when you're a young person. Rap has always been about expression and storytelling. And Kelly says that's part of why Vermont rap music is sometimes overlooked. Because some people think Vermont is this idyllic place where life is relatively easy. Like any art, you know, it's like a reflection of your reality. I think people probably assume that because it's Vermont, it's like all like suburban and nice and like country. But it's not for a lot of people, you know. There's like real struggles in Burlington. There's a lot of hard things that people have experienced that they're sharing through their music. This holds true for Omega Jade. She's been through a lot. And one of the ways she processes it all is to make music. I think hip-hop and writing for her is very much like an expression of of stuff she's gone through, stuff she's going through. Rico James. It's a therapy, this kind of stuff. And 
you know, sometimes we'll make dark shit, but sometimes we'll make good stuff too, you know, but it's, yeah, it, it's all meaningful and it's all f- from the heart. Omega's lived in Vermont for 24 years, but her relationship with music started way back when she was a young kid in San Diego. We were in church for, let, let's see, choir rehearsal, prayer meeting, Bible study, and then I was in the St. Stephen's Gospel Drill Team. So we were in church probably four or five days a week. When Omega was in elementary school, she went to a friend's house, and they turned on Yo! MTV Raps, MTV's first hip-hop music show, and it blew her mind. I just was looking at them rocking the stage, and it was so different than what I was hearing. And I always liked to hear poetry in school. And I would always write it on my own. But then hearing it on Yo! MTV Raps to a beat. I was like, oh my God, I need to do this. She practically sprinted home with this new discovery. I was like, Mom, I went to a friend's house and I watched this thing called Yo! MTV Raps. And it is awesome. And they put poetry to beats. And... It was then that she was like, yeah, I wouldn't do that stuff. Don't do that hip-hop stuff. It's the devil. I was like, okay, okay. So I abided for a little while. Omega abided by continuing to sing gospel songs with the church choir and with her family. She says she would suggest adding in a rap verse from time to time, but they always shrugged it off. So she didn't pursue rap, at least at first. I thought my voice sounded funny. I I would practice in front of people and just get unsure of myself and just stop. When Omega was 21, she moved to Vermont with her partner at the time. Ready though, ready. Raised in a place where they don't support community, so I bounced to find out a vibe that was true to me. Took me cross country to this place of BT, away from everything I knew, including family. Learned if you don't fit, then make shit on your own. And even after arriving, she struggled finding ways to express herself. And it was made harder by her mental health struggles. I didn't even know what a healthy coping strategy was. And so it was just a ticking time bomb. For years, she was diagnosed with bipolar, anxiety, and depression disorder. I was getting on the wrong medication, constantly. And then, after she turned 30, she was finally diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I I had to uh, realize that it stems from abandonment and, and trauma. You see rejection where there is none. Everything is in black and white. There's a challenge with regulating yourself. It didn't help that she was in an abusive relationship and went through a complicated divorce or that she didn't have a stable job or home for a while and experienced homelessness, or that she got hit by a car and had to learn how to walk again and during multiple reconstructive surgeries. I don't like when people ask me what is wrong with me because it, it wouldn't be the right question. It's more like what isn't wrong with you? There's PTSD, BPD, OCD, LMNOP from doing LSD. Eventually, she sought out therapy and started to approach life a bit differently. I hit a rock bottom, and then the opportunity brings itself again. The psychiatrist actually said, you need to do something on stage or you will be back. This was in 2015. And so it's like something was always telling me poetry is your purpose. Being an artist, you know, with the power of words is your purpose. I was just scared of it. I was just scared of it. But that's why I started doing this comedy. Take you for a walk on the G that I am. This ain't no gangster shit. Check it. Check it. I'm the goddess and she mixed with little comedy So you cannot fuck with me, annihilate you verbally It's now known universally, so you really not hurting me I sit on the throne all alone with no king That still don't stop the goddess from getting shit happening This comedy, hip-hop shit Comedy, not rap, was Omega's first creative outlet. She used stand-up as a way to get over her stage fright. 
And eventually, in 2018, she created a show in Burlington called Rhyme and Unreason, where comedians tell jokes and rappers freestyle off of those jokes. That seems to be a theme a little bit <laughs> <Yes>. of <laughs> just gotta start laughing. Yes, gotta laugh to keep from crying. Pretty soon, after Omega's first comedy show, her life changed again for the better. That's when Rajni, the MC who introduced her at the start of this episode, encouraged her to go up and perform in Burlington, but not to perform her stand-up comedy. He wanted her to rap in public, in front of a bunch of other rappers. I got up there, I'm nervous as shit, I'm right next to Rajni, almost holding his arm, and then they pass the mic to me, and I just blurted out as best as I could. Keep in mind, I was the only woman MC during that time. I hurried up and got the hell off stage. I was <laughs> I really did. Wow. Wow. I did it. It was great. I got, you know, they everyone gave me daps. It was great. Salutes. In attendance that night was Rico James, the music producer we heard from earlier. He was impressed by Omega and saw potential for future collaboration. Totally, like, took over. And, like, you know, neck vein popping out. Like, passion from the jump. You could see it right away. You're like, what the, what is she doing? So I think when you see that, when you're not expecting it, it's impactful for sure. Especially when you're like, I don't know who this is at all. And that just, like, you just crushed it up there. Like, I want to know more. Where, where are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you from? What's going on? What's your deal? We need to get that passion onto some songs because you have shit to say, obviously. And we've been doing work with each other ever since then. This free and full expression allowed her to finally speak her truth and mean it. I am the wounded healer and my heart on my sleeve. The rebel in adversity declaring that I won't leave. The courageous mother brave enough to take on the state. The light working heathen proven there's more to me than hate. I am the talented artist who puts out a fine show. And believe it or not, I used to be considered a hoe. But it ain't about what I used to be, it's about what I am now. I am the goddess real enough to tell you what I'm about. I'm that goddess MC working on my first LP. But please believe it will be the first of many. It's like life will tell you that that's exactly what you're supposed to do, but then you'll run from it. The perception she had of herself split wide open, allowing her to start healing from her past. Because it was just my way to be okay. I need a stage. And so I did it more and more, and then finally someone offered me a show. All of a sudden, rapping became less scary and more cathartic. She was reinventing herself through looking inward and rhyming outward. I didn't even see that being an end result. I just, I was doing what my psychiatrist at Browderboro Retreat told me to do. Get on stage or you'll be back. I was just following the prescription. Not every rapper writes about their personal traumas and tribulations, but Omega does. When it gets to be too much, I write. I, I will be guided to that in so many weird ways. And there are a few parts of her life she's written about over and over again. That's coming up right after this. Support for Brave Little State comes from National Bank of Middlebury, a locally owned bank with a focus on serving families, supporting communities, and helping businesses grow and succeed. Serving their hometown of Middlebury and West Central Vermont since 1831. Learn more at nbmvt.com. The song you're hearing is called Never Too Late for Friendship. It's about her mom. She may have gave birth to me, but never really raised me. That may have contributed to me becoming crazy. Her method of punishment bordered on abuse. Given to the system, so my crazy let loose. Built up anger, had me caught up in a rage. So I had to heal by putting pen onto the page. I went from home to home, feeling all alone. Abandonment issues deep within my bones. The fact was, she had mental health issues that she wasn't willing to see about. And it impacted how she treated us. And then it led into being more physical. And if it wasn't physical, she wasn't there. It all culminated when Omega was 10 years old, still a kid living in California. That's when she voluntarily went into state custody. I just wanted this to stop. 
I didn't think about the lasting effects. She begged for me to come back and said she would never do it again. At that point, I was too scared. Most people would say that they did not like going into state's custody. At first, I didn't mind because I wasn't alone. After entering state custody at age 10, Omega's mental health was at an all-time low, and the medication they put her on didn't help. I was in there long enough for them to get, I had a serious anger problem, and it was in the years of using medication to help them become docile, because that was easier. You know I have to come with that deep shit. Keep the message. U.S. a DM. This song is called United United States States of Dope Dope Men, inspired by her experience. Check it. First I was a latchkey, then I went state custody. They couldn't handle me, so then they fed the drugs to me. Nothing really serious. Kept my ass calm, though, until the age 11 when I had my first overdose. I was taking Thorazine before I was a teen. Is that wrecking my kidney, liver, or spleen? At 10, I was on Melorill, but I couldn't identify the emotions that I'd feel. Damn, it's really real. At 13, it was lithium. While in my mind, I was motherfucking killing them. The sickest part about this, I had no choice. I was only a kid, so I had no voice. In the hands of DCF with no options left, I became sedated all because the state had me fully medicated. Moms would come to visit, say I'm like Rain Man. I was on medication from, oh, wow, 10, 11 years old up until my mid-30s. That messes you up physiologically. You're only supposed to have that temporarily until you find the healthy coping strategy to live day to day. Otherwise, they're just creating drug addicts. That they made a future addict. My feelings are I never really learned how to cope and busy depending on United States of dope men. You think that's bad? Check the crack epidemic. I definitely believe in bringing truth to power. There is an empowering feeling with being real with yourself, even if it doesn't give you the best look. I'm almost 45 years old. I've been through a lot of life. Have I learned from it? I do my best to. And that's what I bring to my art. You're not going to hear me trying to say random stuff to get clout. I'm not a gun clapper. I am not a twerker. The times I've tried, it looked like my back was dry heaving. I'm not doing it. Um, (laughs) I just, I want to bring a real message and give people something to think about. Another topic Omega likes to rap about is what it's like to be a woman in the industry. This is a track called War Cry. They call it history because they never believe her because in a man's world the female's words are cursed. Maybe you've heard of rap legends Shah Rock, Rhapsody, MC Light and Jean Grey. Or maybe you haven't. So many women MCs throughout history lack the credit they deserve even though they've helped hip hop become what it is now. It, it feels like you got to do 10 times more to, uh, just to be noticed for one thing. If you're a woman who is a rapper, it's hard because if you're feminine, they find something to say. If you're not feminine, they find something to say. You dress up, they find something to say. You don't dress up, they find something to say. You twerk, they find something to say. You don't twerk, they find something to say. You straight eyes, they got something to say. You don't have straight eyes, they got something to say. Anything a woman does in any kind of profession, specifically MC, it's second guessed. It's scrutinized. The really is insulting. Uniting of the women with the intent of revolting against the patriarchy. Cry synchronized with the rhythm of our heartbeat. I'm more than the woman whom you'll hear roar. I'm the goddess of the light armed with the words of war. Being a woman is hard. Being a woman who is black is double hard. Being a woman who is black and bisexual, shit. Hold on. Where's my water bottle? You're sitting on it? <laughs> <laughs> A few weeks ago, I met up with Omega at a park near her house in Burlington. 
Okay, I am not, hope, I hope you don't oh, sit in that. You. We were accompanied by her 11-year-old son, Tyler. My name is Scott Bucky. And her 8-year-old twins. There's Anastasia, a.k.a. Little Diva, and Anna Maria, a.k.a. Little Mama. Because I be telling people off. I'll tell you off, too. Oh and they let me push them on this merry-go-round thing. Okay, ready? Re okay, we doing this. Oh, my God! Oh. Okay, maybe I yeah, let's go. Run my slide off. What? I love my kids, Yay, but they get on so my nerves. Deep. Some of their shenanigans are so absurd. So I get on the track just to say these oh words. God. Shout out to all the mommies of this world. Early in the morning, twin one is the alarm clock. So full of love, but loud enough to make your heart stop. It's the trio and me, Savage Mama MC. Coming with the gift of gab they took on, honestly. But enough about their smart mouth. We know where they got that. In their rebellious nature, I probably support that. As long as they bring knowledge like my oldest who's in college. And proud to say she has a way with words like her mama. 42 years young, artist mama with no... Drama. Omega hasn't always had custody of her kids. She was worried about perpetuating her own trauma and spreading that to them. But that changed in 2019 when her younger kid's father died in a car accident. Yes, it's for mental health, what I call self-care. Can't be there for them if my mind ain't there. Proud of myself, I've come such a long way. Passing all my blessings to my children each day. I've come I got my kids back and I don't have as much time. So, yes, I am a rapper. I am a black woman who is a rapper. I'm a mother first. For Omega, part of being a mom means thinking a lot about her own mom and the way that she was raised. Abandonment issues deep within my bones. To be a better mother, I must forgive you first. On a spiritual level, that's the only way it works. I write these verses to break generational curses, give offerings to your man. I, I finally was able to take a walk, walk a mile in her shoes, I guess, so to speak. And I get it. It's hard. And it, it, it's it's... You have to find those support systems and those resources so it doesn't feel so lonely. Just wish I was at the point where I didn't blame you, though. At an intellectual standpoint, I know you weren't in your right mind, but I paid the price heavy when I lost mine more times. Do you ever think of how this affects me with my kids? Trying to heal now before having my first grandkid. Help me to heal the generations of hurt. But for my own kids, flip and go berserk. I love you, Joan, and I mean no disrespect. It's just got to get this pain. I cried when I wrote some of that song just because I still held on to a lot of that. I don't mean to, but I do compare myself at times, my mothering to hers. And one biggest thing I have is no matter how hard it is, my kids deserve the truth simply because I know how it feels to not have that most of your life. Mom, look. Yeah, ooh, yes, you braiding it, go ahead, yes, yes. Um, and so I always want them to feel like their dreams matter. Our dreams do they are imp They have a right to feel empowered. Those times when they come and give me hugs and, and we cuddle and watch movies and have snacks. It makes all the tough times worth it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get going soon. Yeah. Okay. okay. Love you, Mom. I love you too. All right. The saving of mankind. I am the beauty that I see within this world. I'll say mantra so much, I'll influence my baby girls. I am joy, peace, and love within my heart center. No longer interested in being anything but a winner. I am the friend who's there in the time of need. I am the manifester creating life from seed. I am infinite wisdom, cause that's what I be on. Uniquely creative Omega Nomicon. Thanks for listening, and to Jeremy Benty for the great question. To see photos from May's reporting and for links to Omega Jade's music, check out the web version of this episode at bravelittlestate.org. While you're there, why not sign up for the BLS newsletter? We're also on Instagram and Reddit at BraveStateVT. This episode was reported by May Nagusky, who also did the mix and sound design. Editing and production by me, Josh Crane. Additional support from Myra Flynn and Sophie Stevens. Angela Evansy is our executive producer. Music today from Rico James. 
and the one and only Omega Jade. Special thanks to Mary Engish, Joya Putnoy, Hannah Braun, Amelia Catanzaro, Matthew Fisher, Nadia Frazier, Amina Rhodes, Jean-Vierre Sangayumfa, and Luke Gothier of Equal Eyes Records. Brave Little State is a production of Vermont Public and a proud member of the NPR Network. If you like our show, you can make a gift at bravelittlestate.org slash donate, or leave us a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. I'm Josh Crane. We'll be back soon with more listener-powered Vermont journalism. The Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast is with you to talk through what you're watching, listening to, and reading. What you need to check out this weekend, what you can skip next, it's all fair game. For pop culture in high spirits, listen to the Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast from 